Jason Garajola. I'm the head instructor for Shaolin Self-Defense Centers. The name of the art that we teach is Shaolin Kempo Karate. I'd like you to welcome you to our brown belt second degree video. This is the 10th video in a series of 11 designed to explore and explain the basic details of all the instructional material that's on our brown belt second degree curriculum requirements. I'd like to have Patrick come out and we can get started right with this material. Remember, each belt rank builds off the material from the past belt. new block called the upholding block looks like this. Edges in here this way. So from here, the man comes in and you just kind of block this way. Don't use your fingers and grab him. Just kind of like a palm roll. You're in here, he punches, and you just kind of in this way. The other hand, just in this way. It's upward palm. It's not a slot when you're doing this. And it's not an upward block. It's just kind of up this way. You get really technical. You kind of block here. This is a channel, this is a channel, and you're just in here. You'd be using it for locking on techniques later on. So that's an upholding block right in this way. You'll see it in the material. The next strike is called a snake bite. Kind of a technical strike, using it for the eye region, some other portions too. Take the first three fingers, squeeze them together very tightly, and protrude them out, and you'd just be hitting the person right there. You can go for the temple or for the eye. We use it many times when you're blocking, and you're coming in, and you also hit the eye at the same time. Or you're coming in this way, he throws a punch, and you're coming in just right off of it this way. But you'll see it in some of the movements where you're coming in this way. Be very careful when you're doing it. It might not seem like much, but you get the person in the right spot. It's also it's the cousin of the trigger finger. That's the snake bite that way. The next one is called the Buddha palm. This is a palm strike. This is a karate chop. Just push your feet. When you do the two together, it's called a Buddha palm. It's like the C-shaped edge right here. Can we come right into the jawline, hitting points underneath here, coming right into the chest region. Remember, straight palm and a chop. Buddha palm kind of comes up this way in here to kind of get those uh, hard to reach places. You'll see it in the material as we get going. From here, the next one is called a snake uh, kicking. Snake kicking is a general concept. It doesn't describe an exact kick, it's a concept of kicks. So a snake kick is anything that has a kind of a probing nature to it. Coming up underneath the arm this way. Using not the toes, but the ball end up under. So from here, you could be, you could be grappling the guy from here, stepping back, hitting him, and you want to deaden the arm. You come right up underneath. Also, you have snake poking techniques where you could be coming in and coming from the back. You can do it low medium, usually it's usually taught right up to the throat region. So it's anything that's darting. We'll get into dragon kicks next round, but the snake kicks are probing. You can do things of this nature where you're doing like a snap kick, but you got to come around his lead leg. See how I kind of came around and in that way? Sometimes when you're sparring with somebody, you can use it coming up to the body that way. That's the snake kicking concept. Next technique, not even technique, these are just the basic building blocks of what's new with this rank, and that's why we separate it. So you can practice on the bags, boards, people, all things, is sweeping leg motions. From here, it's called knocking the pillars of the temple with a sweeping leg motion. From here, we had the ones where you were kicking before. What I want you to kind of do is kind of get your arm, let me turn this way, so you can see this better. Get your arm up this way and kind of sweep your foot across. From here, you're in here, and you just kind of just sweep out that way. Another one could be where you're in here, and you kind of just sweep your foot across. Different than the kicking techniques where you, there's nothing wrong with those kicking techniques, right? But, but just the sweeping motion that way. Or you're in here like this, and the sweeping motion's that way. Now you'll notice that there's a lot of overlapping. Past videos, I did techniques like this before. Better to have overlaps where concepts mend into each other so you have a nice tight net than to have gaps in what you're doing. Thank you, Patrick. 
When you're doing each of these things, whether it's the upholding block, the snake bite, the Buddha palm, the snake kicking, or the sweeping, these are the basic techniques that are new to this rank. That's why I wanted to isolate them. Practice them, get them down well, because they'll be part of bigger techniques later. Okay, now what I like to do is get involved in the Kempo techniques so you can see how those basics fit in. The first one is called snake. This is what we show we do. This is do snake cores on a tree branch. Person punches in, come around the arm. As he strikes in, come around the arm. If you can get to the eyes, come to the eyes. Come around the arm, a little push this way, ride up, chop here, chopping mechanism here, cutting off to the neck, tilt the head up, bring him down this way, and just before he falls, you're going to see in a second, I'm going to go two to the eyes, four to the throat. Come on up again. Snake coils around the tree branch. He strikes in, extend them a little bit, or you can come to the eyes that way and then extend them. Ride up, hit and hit, lock out, tilt, come back, as he's falling, two boom. You're kind of sending them into the floor. Let's do it from this direction here. He strikes in, pull them in, especially if you're shorter. Here, hit the side of the neck, tilt, bring them where you were, and right in. Be very careful with that. The next one is snake darts out tongue, block, with the upholding block, hit to the throat, step in, you have your snake strike, come in, elbow, a low strike to the groin, you do either a hammer, chop, sweep, creep in, drop onto the ankle. Again, from here, he strikes in, block, poke, hit, in, sweep, up, hua. Let's do that one more time from a different direction. He punches in with his other hand, upholding block, snake, strike to the temple region, elbow, creep through, and strike. And the last one, snake shoots out venom, he strikes in, block, block, kick, kick, step, and kick. Just punch in lefty so they can see that. One, two. If you have to go one, two, three, that's fine. Upholding, upholding. As his body's reaching up and getting extended with his energy, kick under. Quick dart, step, bang, kick. When you're doing a technique, if you kick here, you can land on the floor and then kick there. Or from here, just kind of shoot. All depends how you catch yourself. And right in. Thank you, Patrick. Use this as a helpful reminder once you were shown techniques. Use it as a way to kind of maybe catch a different angle on a move. Practice them, righty, lefty. Make sure you're doing all the moves perfectly before you start moving on to other material. Next, I'd like to present to you the combinations. Combination number 25. You're going to cat back with a chopping block. The left half of your body gives, and that yin and yang together. So as he strikes in, right in. As he's backing up, chop to the solar plexus, tiger, tiger, as you're moving forward. Again, he strikes in, in, he'll be going back, opening up the stomach points, face and face. Let's do from the other side. From here, he strikes in. You have the block here, but don't be hesitating like this. By the time you block, boom, you're going right in. Strike, strike, and strike. One more time from the other side. He strikes in, in. This other hand could be blocking other things, but the combination, you're just practicing putting the proper strikes to the proper points. Hit, hit, and hit. Number 28, he strikes in. I'm going to extend him by stepping back. Trapping, controlling the shoulder. I can kick anywhere along the back, back of the head, kidneys, here, where I'm going to do. Right now, I'm going to go back here, striking here, keep my body next to him, strike to the groin, sweep out, and I can leave. A sweeping leg motion from before. He strikes in, lefty, kind of trapping, holding, holding points here, or controlling the shoulder. From in here, Coming into the back, boom, 
Keep your body right near him. Come up. Sweeping motion. One more time. Kind of trap. Let's go uh, righty. When you trap, you can also be injuring. Here, kicking. That time I went to the head, up to the groin. Now from here, if you find yourself out of position, just turn. Boom. You can even use your hand if you need it. And commission 13. Take off your belt, Patrick. This could be lots of different things, but for right now, this could be the belt around your waist. Thank you. Make sure you don't whip anybody in the eyes. It's a very dangerous technique. Could actually uh, be a variety of different types of weapons, but uh, the instructor will get into that with you. As the man strikes in, kind of block with the belt and let the edges whip into his eyes. And then your forearm comes in and blocks. And then from there, strike to the body. As his head's coming down, take this and thrust it into his neck. Take your forearm, striking like that. Cross the head, getting it back. Lock in, bring over, and flip over. Let's do that again. And don't rip it out on your partner's neck. That's not polite. Let's do it from the other side. Block, right from there. Hit to the body. As his head's coming down, hit up into the neck. Tie in. Now you can be here, here, here. And then there's your throw. That way. Last time. Do it nice and slow. He punches in. Hit here. Strike. In. Hit to get the head tilted. Never step behind the head without it being tilted. Lock on. Step. And go. Thank you, Patrick. When practicing the combinations, especially like that one, do it slow. The main thing to this is not ultimate fighting reality here. It's learning where to put the points in your body, his points, and learning how to leverage and move. I'm doing them on a body instead of in the air so you can get a feeling and really see how it's working. Practice it righty, practice it lefty, practice the strikes individually also. to work on number four kata. The kata required is brown belt second degree. I'll talk through it the first time. Horse stance, X block, high block, and a circle block. Tiger out to the face, cat position, back to the horse stance, back fist. Same thing on the other side, double block, hit, cat position, back fist, cat position, Side kick, half moon forward, block, and a striking mechanism. Stepping, turning, another offense or defensive motion. Coming back to the front with a block and a strike. Another block and strike, another block and strike. Turn, block, notice my waist, block, block, in, open, catch, knee kick, turn, a throw or a guard. Blocking presence, in, grab, knee kick, a throw or blocking presence, fake, go forward once with a block and strike, twice with a block and strike, three times, and four times. Now I'll kind of just walk through it so you can get a feeling for it, then we'll work on some possible applications with Patrick. There's many applications on each of these moves, there's different ways to do it. I could spend two hours just on the one form. This will be designed to give you a general idea. I'd like to have Patrick come out so we can work on some of the application. From here, he goes to grab, punch, or something of that nature. You have your double blocking mechanism, or you're just blocking one. Hit, catch, cat position, make him go back, and then another one. And the same thing on the other side. When you do the other side, I'm going to try something different. Blocking or guarding here, hitting, striking, when I come in with the back fist, I'm just going to kind of sweep a leg. So 
So if you see me do this, you know I'm doing the back fist. If you see me do that, I'm going to try to sweep his leg here. So as he comes in, from in here, I'm like this, like this, I strike, and then as I come out and hit, I just kind of go out that way. You might see it easier from this side if I do it from the same way here. Like this, here like this, hitting, and I come behind. Watch how my hip goes this way, my hand goes that way. A little sweeping mechanism. Next move, from here, he comes in, he throws something, a little kick, come in, block, with a striking mechanism. Grabbing him, throwing him, that way. Okay, from over here, blocking, kicking, coming in, blocking and striking. Maybe I don't grab him this time. And I just turn and I block and strike somebody this way. Then I come back, he throws a left punch, and I kind of just block, and I get him in this way. Or, he just goes to grab me, and I just kind of do that boot upon before, and that way into the heart. For me, I kind of block and punch, and I block and punch. Or, I block and punch, and I come in here, and I break, and I punch to the back. Or another possibility, I know I'm talking fast, i got so many things to say. You're in here, you don't even block, you just kind of, as he comes to grab you, just kind of hit him in two positions at one time, maybe hitting in the nose in this way. From here, the next move, let's have Patrick come right over here. I'm like this, so we just did this part, kick, in, 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 one, two. We do this sweeping motion this way. He throws, let's say, he throws like a, I don't know, right kick or something of that nature. Watch how I kind of block coming through this way. So from in here, as he kicks, I kind of just block, maybe I strike him again. You might see it easy, do like a front kick just so we can do this nice and easy. Block, and I can get two out of it. Or you can do the kick you did before. What do you do, a side kick? You just block, you come here guarding or striking, and then maybe guarding and striking here. Uh, if he throws his left foot, I could be blocking this way, and he spins, and I kind of check him in here. I got my hand right here, and I was like this, I was kind of hiding behind him. Well, if he comes around with a spinning back fist there, I am in here like this, I'm kind of hiding behind him. Let's keep it simple at first. From here, he just kicks. He goes to grab, opening up. Got the eyes, knee kick. Maybe stomping on something. Maybe throwing him. Or maybe I just stomped on him, he falls. I get on guard for the next guy. Either way, he does it again. We're in here like this. You get to do that one twice, such a good move. Knee, snap. Maybe you step on him, maybe he's gone. You get on guard for the next guy. Or, you were in here, you knee kick, and you throw him, and he goes down. The next one, you act like you're going that way, and you turn, and you block and strike. And when you block and strike, you block and poke in here, block, poke in here, block, poke in here. You could be blocking here and striking, or you could be striking here and striking there, or he throws the punch and you kind of maybe get the eye in that way. If his hand's this way more, more in this way, and this way. And then you just would turn. Thank you, Patrick. When you're doing the four kata, practice in the air, get it down. Practice the applications you got maybe from me, from your instructor, then start to make up some of your own by manipulating and changing the moves a little bit. Practice some bags, do some strikes on boards, put sparring gear on, work offense and defense drills back and forth with each other. It's a lot of knowledge there. Many years of studying on that form. Next, I'd like to present to you the first bow stair form in our system. You should probably give me some history over it, so I'll let him uh, keep working on you with that. When you're doing your staff form, Think about the yin-yang of the whole body when you're doing your movements, not just of your upper arms. I'll do the form once, then we'll have uh, Patrick come out, we'll work on some uh, application. Open up, push forward, out, up, let it slide down, ride your forearm, look to the side, block, Mechanism up, drop, twist, poke, slide back, catting motion, reach out, strike, 
block, reach, strike. Come back, block, poke, unwind, down. Block, cover, up, over, down. This is a repeat of the same side. You'll be able to see different things that we're facing this way. Block, reach, hit, block, reach, hit, block, step in, thrust, watch the unwinding motion, slide into it. Come back, cat, down, cat, up, poke, block, cover block, trapping, blocking, coming back, step forward once with the butterflies twice, three times, four times, unwind, strike, and come back. Let's do that again. I'll kind of do a little flow through speed so you can get a better feeling for it. Work on some of the application. When you're working on your movements, the first one from here is just a guard position. You come forward, maybe he swings something, and you're just kind of blocking. The next move, the edge comes down, and you kind of hit his hand, try to block it, come in and hit. So from here, it could just be you hit like this, and you block and then he swings the other end at your head and you block. I like to prefer to hold the lock and roll. You block here, or you can be blocking the middle here, wherever you happen to be, hitting the head this way, coming in between the hands and hitting down. The next one is a simple technique, pretty much you see what you get. It's a poking mechanism and a block. Or you could poke at him, he does a high block with his staff, and then he comes at you low with something and you're kind of coming back. The next one, he's coming at me, I have a blocking technique, and I'm coming back. Many times you see me when I'm doing things like this, I'll block, kind of hitting the hand, and going that way. The next one coming back this way, is reciprocal, come over here on the side, is reciprocal, he's just doing something over here at me. I'm just kind of coming this way. Or I could be coming against his hands. He comes in, hitting his hand this way, and hitting his hand that way, and keeping it pressed on him. The next one, he's coming in, I kind of block, and I come in, and then I try to hit his legs, boom. And then I'll be swinging all the way around like I did before and then dropping. Let's do that again. So from here, I would poke and then just hit, boom. And I'd be bringing it up, coming down and right in. And I'm just kind of guarding. The moves on this side here is the exact same duplication all the way to over here. Now the next move that's different is he's coming in with something and kind of blocking and coming down this way. Maybe throwing out, hitting and coming down that way. So when you hear like this, think about trapping something down low and throwing it away really hard. Maybe smacking down on top of his hands. The next one everybody seems to like is a favorite. Somebody's coming in like from high over, and you're just kind of poking in underneath this way, wedging it in. This actually was used against horses many years ago. From here, you spring back, and you block upwards. And then from in here, he's coming into the side here, you block this way. And from here, what I like to try to do is try to come right down on top of his feet, right in this way, or right down on top of his hand, or just smacking this straight down. So from the poking mechanism, you come upwards and block to the side, frontwards here, and then right here just wham, right down. If you want, you can be getting into other moves from this way. 
guest speaker came right through right there. From here, you could be doing other maneuvers coming around. We'll get into the other form, the next rank. Uh, there's a different form from in here. From in here, the next move is kind of interesting. You're here like this, and it's very misunderstood coming this way. What I'd like you to do is you could think about from in here, you had somebody trapped, you could be thinking about coming through and just coming around and hitting them. <laughs> Give you staff. If you'd like to do that. Or you could just be from in here and you're just getting ready to block from in here and you're kind of covering off to the side. And the next move you turn and you hit somebody or you're clearing a mechanism this way. And then from here, all you're doing, it's like when you're fighting and you're moving around with somebody, all you're doing in here is you're blocking and then from here, you get like this and you're moving around. All you're doing is kind of stepping forward, potentially blocking these things and moving in and kind of rushing somebody forward. And then at some point, you do a fake kick, you come around and you do the same move again, hitting them right across the backside that way. So that'll look like this from here. And you're just kind of retreating and you'll be backing up be backing up, he looks at this, boom, and coming around. You don't even have to kick, you can just twirl. This move, many years ago, centuries ago, was designed for uh, the soldier on foot to be knocking, developing a lot of torque, and knocking people off horses that were higher up. Thank you, Patrick. The whole idea of these movements is to get them down so you understand the basic hand positions and everything else, that I showed you and your instructor is going to be showing you. From there, you practice hitting a bag. You practice very slow on a partner, working on things. And if something goes a little bit wrong, you take your other Kempo knowledge and you fit it in. You always try to go with the flow no matter what's happening. Okay, now let's get into some uh, jujitsu, some grabbing techniques. Each belt rank, if you've been following the series, there's different wrist grabs. Front grabs, back grabs, headlocks, side headlocks. Now it says escapes from strategic and te technical grabs. What does that mean? Well, it means somebody coming up behind you, kind of grabbing you like this, and you like this. Somebody coming up behind you, putting you in a headlock this way. Somebody putting you in grabbing techniques that are not just simple grabs of emotion when they come at you like this. It's grabs with a purpose. Okay, so uh, I don't know, pick one of those, or something like that. Okay, from in here, this is a good grab on his part. Got my neck controlled back in here. What you have to do from here is kind of get to the leg in here, put your, your rear end on his knee this way, disturbing his balance. And then from here, you kind of do as a strike to make him disturb his balance. Then maybe give a quick elbow, and then get in some techniques, and maybe put him in a strategic technical grab. <laughs> I'm just, these are just going with the flow, no matter what you're working on. The forms, combinations of tempos, and weapon forms are set. Everything else in the system is reaction. So from here, kind of give me a different version. Like this, here he is. Now you can do things like this and like this. The best thing to do is he just goes to grab you like that, is you connect, as soon as you feel arms coming up underneath, you kind of bend and shrink and you, catch your balance. But let's say he gets you up like this. What you do is you back kick to cross the knee area, try to ride down the shin, stomping of the foot, coming up to the groin. Notice, I'm not really looking. I know where he's at. I can feel where he's at. I'll come this way. Don't hurt me. What are you doing? What are you doing? Please, let go. Whoo, whoo, wham. And then from there, what I might do is put him in an arm locking mechanism, maybe roll him, maybe we both fall to the floor, and then the fight, what? The fight starts from there. Okay. The whole thing with strategical technical grabs is up to this point you're really just grabbing each other. Just, you know, just kind of simple grabs. Now all of a sudden somebody's grabbing you with thought processes. What you should try to do is put your partner in two or three grabs and then your partner puts you in two or three grabs. And what he's trying to do is put you at a severe disadvantage. When you try to put people with disadvantages, mess up their balance of their head. This, believe it or not, would fall under this classification. Somebody locking up your arm and pressing up your head. This is a real strategic thing in this position. In fact, this, we'll make that our last one. He puts me in a hold like that, he got my arm, and he shoves my head back. This is hard to do. What are you gonna do? You really can't fight back, because he'd be pushing. He's probably making you fall. What I would do is just... 
You right there, Pat? Yeah. Let's go with the fall. He was pushing me that way. Just lock up and go. Thank you, Patrick. Just follow the directions. Put your partner in a couple, your partner puts you in a couple, and go back and forth. And you'll be exploring how to get out of grabs when you're at a real disadvantage. A simple front choke is kind of easy. A person's showing all their cards. When they start messing up your balance, that's the hard part. Scenarios. We're going to do um, tacker against two clubs. Notice each belt rank we did overhead, side, poking, guy holding you, restraining you with it, I think was the last one. Now the guy has two clubs. Now you might say, well, what's the set technique in the system for this? There is no set technique in the system for this. A person swinging two clubs, what are you doing? Well, you know, you probably start out with your role playing, you're waiting, what are you going to do? You're going to get hit. So you might as well work on a technique. Now from here, you can always take the kamikaze approach and just kind of dive in and try to get him. And that might be if he kind of opened himself up, you might right there, boom, and try to go in, get a point for knockout, and drop him that way. If you're at a distance a little more, back up. Remember from the last video, I said this is always a good technique. The guy's swinging, you don't know what to do. Wham! This spinning back side kick off the side. All my, for those who didn't see that video, all my internal organs go this way, wham, and I hit them. I might get hit with some whiplash, but it goes against my yang side, not my yin side. It's an excellent move. I think that's quite strongly probably the best possible move if you don't know how to defend yourself against something. You turn everything away, wham, and then you deal with it from there. Another one you could be doing is trying to using some of your snake techniques to pop out them. But if he was smart, he wouldn't let me get there. So you might have to do something like a reverse crescent motion that comes across with a sweeping concept. So he's swinging them at me, and boom! I'm trying to take everything out, and I would follow it up with another kick that way. You could take a little bit more of a beating on your legs than other parts of your body. You have the um, gun, Patrick? That's the concept from that way. Now the gun with role playing is actually very similar, exact same thing as the last belt rank. When you're doing your gun techniques, your instructor will be showing you simple things like coming into the side, hitting here, maybe locking and snapping and going for complete takedown. The whole key here is with the role playing. In my school, once or twice a month, like everybody coming with their street clothes, so we work on the techniques with street clothes on. From here, somebody might come up to you and say, hey, you, you, go, go, get over there, come on, come over here, come over here with me. Right there, when he points, is the time to what? Do something. So from here, the person might be over here, come on, get over here with me, come on. Or he might be behind you, hey, no fool now, get over there, come on. If he does that, that's his mistake. If for some reason, you hand him something, whatever, you've got to utilize the opportunities that are made. So from here, when he's doing something with me, and he has it, you know, what do you want, what do you want? You do all your role playing, you get the one hand high that you're not going to be using. What do you want? What do you want? Please don't hurt me. Cowering now. He says something. It takes a little bit longer to react when he says something. What do you want? What do you want? Over there. Right there. I was going to react because he was talking. I would come in, hit to the base of the neck, come behind him, keep him down low, break him, and flip him right over. And then from there, maybe snap. From there, do whatever I have to do. When you do this technique, if you are going to do this one, let's do it right from this side here. With this hand. You know, and you go, what do you want, what do you want, what do you want? And, he, and he's saying to go over there, or he's just saying, give me your money. He's not even doing it. He's not going to move. He's not going to make it easy for me. Well, what do you want, what do you want, what do you want? Money. Okay, okay, let's go get for a while, okay? If you go to move, right there, that's a knockout. If you don't get the knockout, you got to break his arm. That's important. You have to believe in that mechanism right to the back there. Now, there's another technique that I talked about. We'll use this leaf here as my uh, wallet. He asks us for what he wants. What do you want, what do you want? Okay, okay, just take my wallet, please. It's called the toss and turn. What did he come for? Your wallet or to shoot you? If he's going to shoot you in a public spot, he's definitely going to shoot you in a private spot if you move off somewhere off with him to the woods, wherever this park happens to be, or into the parking lot. So if somebody wants something, as I talked about in the old, the second, uh, the brown belt first video, I want to talk about in this one, so we get it going again, because it's that important. What do you want, what do you want? Yeah. Okay, okay, please, please, just take my wallet, please. And I just toss and turn away and move. It's a very simple technique, but you got to work on your role playing. What he does, he puts it back here, and on you like this, you know, what do you want? 
What do you want? Please. Okay. No. You might want to just give me your wallet and try to move away. You might say, oh, he's going to shoot me. Well, if he's going to shoot you, if you gave him his wallet and you run away, he's probably going to shoot you anyway. Think about that. It's a very good video uh, by a man named uh, Detective Strong. It's called Strong Against Crime. I recommend that everybody watches it, and martial arts should watch it too, because the martial artist usually always thinks about having to do karate on the guy. And he gives you techniques, mentally, preparedness beforehand and afterwards. I know this is my own video, and you think I'm talking about somebody else's, but take knowledge wherever you can get from it. And it's a good thing about role-playing beforehand. Get yourself mentally ready. As far as the technique from there, I know you didn't want a technique from there, because now I put myself in that position, and he had me like this. You know, you really can't do anything. You're going to get hit. You just have to go, you know, just say you just, he's moving you over and you think you're going to get shocked. He's pulling you over. You already gave him your wallet. And he goes, I don't want your wallet. And he goes, you know, what do you want? Please, don't hurt me. Please, please, please. And then you would go do your techniques and go. Now from here, let's do this slow so you kind of see when I decided to move. You know, what do you want? What do you want? Please, please don't hurt me. Please. Oh, Jesus. And then I go. I got it pinned. I don't know if you can see it. Right up against his body here. And I'd come through. It's going off. The idea is to have it go off when it's facing him, not when it's facing you. So even if you hear like this, you know, just turn this way so you can see this here. You know, what do you want? I can't do anything right here. If I do this, 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 that's it. What do you want? Please, what do you want? Don't hurt me. Oh, please. Oh, no. See, it's pointing that way. Then I might just come in and go, boom. From here, maybe buckle him. Maybe I have to wrestle him down. Maybe he's going to go off. Maybe he's going to get glanced off the shot. Who knows? That's last ditch. Put the knife there, Patrick. That's last ditch possibilities. But it's a role playing. If you don't practice it, you're not going to find the opportunity. You have to find the opportunities to do things. Okay. Knife to the back. From in this way. Let's do uh, this one first right here. This also can be true for the gun, too. Let me try to move you around somewhere. Let's come this way. One of the first moves, if you do decide to actually do a maneuver, is to come this way, chopping across the groin, controlling and pinning. Don't move away. You have to stay close to him and hit him to the base. There are lots of points back here. You're getting the energy meridians later, the goal out of points and stuff like that. That'll come later. But when you're in here like this, and like this, this is a little different here. You have to do your role playing. What do you want? What do you want? I always, when I do the what do you want, what do you want, I like to look behind, make sure he's alone. Maybe there's a curb I can bang him into. Maybe there's three guys back there. I don't want to do anything. From here, if you do decide to do something, boom, pin, stay close, hit, and then maybe go into your techniques from there. There's a chance that it could still be there and you might be getting a little bit cut. Hopefully, after the chopping mechanism here, after the chopping mechanism here, and after the shot here, and after a big arm break here, it shouldn't be in his arms. But if it is, and you go to sweep him, you might get a little cut here. But guess what? Better cut a little bit there than another part of your body. The whole thing with this knife role playing is to get the techniques down so that you understand the opportunities that are presented in these possibilities. There is no set technique here. Somebody's got you like this. It's a different one. From here, you know, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? From here, he's talking. I have to get his attention over here. Okay, maybe I give him the wallet and I go. That's always the option. You keep like $20, $34 in your wallet, so when you throw it down to him, you don't feel like you lost anything, you have the rest of your money somewhere else, and you go. Your instructors will be giving that to you. See how I got his arm this way? So as I'm role playing, you know, what do you want? What do you want? Please don't hurt me. He cannot, he might be able to like, you know, move around in his hand a little bit, but which way can't you go, Patrick? He can't go back this way. And if he tries to pull out, I have mechanisms to go with. But the whole thing is that locking up of the arm back here. Just make sure we can really see this. If you get caught in here, the only thing to do is to get this way. Kind of like you're making a, a muscle at the beach. Is go this way. Once you're here, if you can latch on, great. I think you've grabbed me different before. Yeah, so but just this way here. Then I might be able to have to roll him and take him down, and then the fight continues. You know what I'm saying? It's not over. But that's locking up of the arm. Thank you, Patrick. So the whole thing here is I'm not reviewing each technique 10 times because each time I did it, it could be different. Get the concepts down to the forms, kebbles, and cobbles and apply them. And each time you apply them with different partners, if my partner was bigger than Patrick, the moves might be a little bit different. If the person was shorter, it might be a little bit different. You go with the flow of what's happening.
like to work with you is an awareness drill. Each belt rank was awareness drill. Some wipe out with the double blockers, to the crane balance drill, to the snake boa seizing drill. Now it's called the octagon. If you're right here, picture there's eight points around, or you can picture a clock. 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, all the way around. What I want you to do is not to go this way so you can see this. When people throw a punch, a kick, or a grab at you, a lot of times you'll block and stay. That's like 12 o'clock. Or you might block what he throws and come here at 8 or 9 o'clock, and you tend to do just one thing. What I want you to do is make sure you're using all the points. Put chalk down on the floor, the rug, whatever you're doing, and go with different points. So he throws something at me, I block, and I come through this way like at 1 o'clock. The reason why we're doing this drill now is sometimes by this rank you develop habits of being feeling secure and comfortable going one direction as opposed to others. Make sure you go in different directions. He throws a different type of strike. I block, which just worked out good because now I can go two for three o'clock this way. Six o'clock would be backing straight up. He comes in, I block, and I bring whatever he's doing, and I bring him right this way. And I come around. Make sure you're using all the points. What I would do for a minute is set the clock maybe two minutes and go back and forth with my partner. He comes in with something, I block, and I come around, back through at 11 o'clock, this way. Make sure you're using all your points. You might say, I am. Well, if you are, congratulations, you've been training well, your instructors have been showing you well. If you haven't, it's not the end of the world, just start practicing, you go to different points. You're, most people stay between like four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, and seven o'clock when you do the no mind drills. What I'd like you to do is put your back up against the wall, and guess what? You really can't back up. Your techniques will be required to go in this way and coming around. You might even want to work coming around your partner and doing things. That's the octagon drill, getting aware of all the different points. It's a simple drill, but don't overlook it. It'll help your training in the end. Thank you, Patrick. So when you're doing the octagon, do it simply, do it. Get the bugs out of the system if you're getting to move in a particular direction. Do it up against the wall. That's very important if you find yourself in the back end always doing the thing. Now I'd like to talk about is the no mind, the mushin drill, where it says you're down on the floor already. You've done no mind drills from standing up from vulnerable positions and everything else. Now I'd like you to do, you take a spot on the floor, let's say you're lying on your back, and then you say go, and your partner starts to attack you. Go, he comes in, I kick him right there. See how I stunned him? Kick him that way, boom, and I lock him up. I did a drill from there. That's a little uh, more sophisticated. I can do simpler things where I'm on my back, he comes in, and I just kick him, stopping his block. From here, coming in, pulling him down, kicking him again. I could go into grappling from there too. It doesn't really make a difference what I'm doing. From here, I could be on the floor. It's whatever position you are lying down and your partner. Do the octagon too. He could be standing right in front of you. You say go, you don't know what he's doing, go. Boom, and you start fighting from there. He could be behind you, he could be to the side of you. Come to the side. From here, you're like this, maybe he's gonna stomp on you. I don't really know what he's gonna do. Go. He got me, boom. He would have fallen right on top of me because he got me right away. He like this. Now I'm gonna act like I'm hurt. And I'm in here and I'm trying to choke him out through this way, get him up under. I don't know if you can see this. Let's try this way. I'm trying to get up under his neck this way. Whatever you do, he could be by the bottom of my feet. This way. He comes in, go. Boom. Oh, he's got my foot. That's what he was going for. He's got my foot. He's starting to do techniques to it. Boom. Take out his balance. Ride up, maybe do an ankle manipulation, maybe come to the head. You won't be good at it if you don't practice down from the floor. Thank you, Patrick. When you're doing your no mind drills from the floor, you might not get points. Yeah, I can do that. Well, good, but practice it. Even if you don't know how to do it mentally, the whole idea of the martial arts is knowing how to do things mentally, getting your body to do them physically. Practice on the floor, it doesn't really matter what you're doing. That's not the major focus right now. The idea is that you're doing it. The martial arts is a journey, not a destination, it's the experience of practicing it, to get yourself familiar from the floor that way.
Let's get started with the blindfolded sparring. You could lose your vision, it could be dark out. This is more of an awareness drill, getting yourself sensitive to figuring out things, listening to your inner feelings, uh, your hearing, and things of that nature. So we're going to put this on fast here. Now, when you're doing these things, we're going to work more on the mechanical nature of your techniques. What we're going to do is we're going to do things not so much in the mental sense today, more of the physical sense. The mental concepts of doing this better will come uh, later. So what we're going to do, we're going to move around with Pat. What I'm going to do is I don't want to stay a moving target. All the things, I want to keep myself moving. And wherever he's at, he might even hit me. Boom, I'm here like this. Once I hit him, I'm going to want to get a hold of him and, and, and get into grappling. I definitely want to get into grappling. Everything I'm going to be doing right now is going to be trying to get into grappling because then that's where I'm set. So from here, I might do things like keeping moving. I'm going to keep my head moving, my hands moving, my body moving. But I have to be, I can't get caught up in what I'm doing. I've got to be listening for him, wherever he's at. I might grasp him. Once you grasp him, go for another point of contact. Once you get two points of contact, boom, you definitely know where he is. So what you want to do is keep yourself moving, listening, feeling, oh, you got some, and then go. Try to be in the same spot as I was before. Now, if you don't know where he is, you can try to be quiet, but my advice is be quiet and listen to him, but keep yourself moving. And in here, do spinning moves like that. Well, I know where he is. I got him. Boom. Bang. You all right, Pat? Boom, right in the face. Boom. And then get him. I always want to go into the grapple from here. So when you're moving, you want to do things also jerky a little bit, like you hear like this, boom, throw out a kick that way in case you keep them guessing as to where you're at. Throw spinning back fists, throw this, throw wheel kicks on the floor, throw yourself, keep yourself moving around to wherever he's at. I don't really know where he's at. He's coming in, boom. In fact, I think my, just my toes hit you that one time and I found out where he was, and you go. Okay, so now you're moving around, you're using your back fists, you're using your sporadic kicking techniques, you're using your dragon tails, you're using your iron brooms, you're moving all around, and you're trying to find them. If you can't find them, and knees up against a car, up against a wall, that's fantastic. Then you only have to worry about one thing. Now he hits you, boom, oh. You might get hit, you might be falling to the floor. That's great. Hopefully, if you got knocked out in the first shot, it's over. You won't worry about anything else. You want to get to a grappling position. Once you get to a grappling position, this is perfect, because you exactly know where he is. But if you don't know where he is, all you have to do is get another point of contact, and you should be able to figure out where he's at. Once you have him in a grappling position, and you're blindfolded, or you're on the floor, where's the mat around here? Okay, come no. on. Okay. Let's say you hear like this. It's to your advantage to bring him down to the floor. I'm not an advocate of bring people down to the floor if you don't have to, because if there's multiple attackers, but you don't really know where you're going to be stepping or something of that nature. If you knee him and bring him down to the mat, now at least you can keep fighting. And the whole idea is once you get into a grappling position with him, you don't want to leave it. So if he gets on top of you, don't try to fight your way off and get away, you really can't do that. So if he gets on top of you, you want to you wanna keep him here. This is a cure for you. Get an eyeball. Get his throat. Start choking him. I think I, it looks like he's on top of me. He is. Of course he is. But I got him pretty locked here, right, Pat? Right like this. If you have to, lock your weight around him this way. If you have to, kick out his legs this way. But don't give up that position of in here. Put a lock on him. Whatever you have to do. Oh, I'm facing backwards. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. When you're doing your blindfolded sparring and grappling, do it under the guidance which your instructor there so that nobody's going to be getting hurt. Do it slow. Eventually, the next bell is going to be two and one sparring. I'm not saying you can get caught up that way and have to do something blindfolded, but if you can do it blindfolded, it's a lot easier when your eyes are open. Now I'd like to work on is a little speed requirement. What I want you to do is put the bag down for one second. You know, you're fighting somebody, they throw something, they grab you, you block, you hit, 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 boom, bang. You're a little quick zoom right into them, 
right in and through. So from here, he comes in here, one, two, spin, three, four, bang, right in. That's it. We're going to have Patrick do, then we're going to move around with him. And when I say go, he's going to unleash with four quick strikes. Ready, go. One, two, three, four. That's it. Ready, go. One, two, three, four. There you go. Again, ready, go. One, two, three, four. That's the idea. And if it's just 1.2 seconds, it's not the end of the world. The idea is to go with the flow. And when you're going with the flow, you want to have good focused strikes moving right through. They might say, well, I can do that. Well, if you can do it, you only know you can do it by practicing it. You get out there and you flow with three quick four strikes, eventually you'll be doing five strikes. You just get that flow going nice and fast. From here, the next technique, each belt rank we'll be doing different types of uh, breaking. So make sure you get the instruction. I'm not going to take a half hour and explain board breaking. I just want right now have you think about breaking two boards with a knee strike. So picture you're fighting with somebody, you're in here, and boom. The whole goal is to get that focus right through the board. Two boards, not much harder than one if you've been doing one in lots of different directions. So Mia, Pat's going to do a, a double strike when he's ready. Right through, nice and easy. Patrick had no doubt in his mind that he could do that. He knew he could do it, just right through, nice and simple. Now from here, I can pick a different strike, Patrick. Pick them, another kicking technique. You could do hand techniques, but not right now. Get the focus through the two boards with the feet first. A snapping motion, okay. From here, he brings it up, right through. Now, I would not advise, can you bring these off to the side, Patrick? I would not advise most people holding boards for snap kicks without proper safety gear on. There is a potential to come up. I'm just very experienced with catching the boards that way. You know, don't be shy about wearing a mouthpiece, headgear, uh, that way, and uh, have maybe somebody else even put their hand in front of your face. It's better to be safe. And the whole idea with board breaking, when you go to do a break, if there's a doubt in your mind that you can't do that break, you shouldn't be doing that break. You shouldn't go from breaking one board to three boards without doing two. It should be logical, it should make sense, it should be safe. If there's a doubt in your mind, you're not ready for it, you need to practice in the air, practice on the bags, and get focused so you can go through it. Board breaking should not be risk taking, it should be building up your confidence. Once you can do two boards with this, get two boards over here, then get two boards with all different types of kicks. Then you move on to your hands. Kind of interesting now that the uh, sun is coming out here, but the next subject we're going to be talking about is the Fountain of Youth. It's a book written by, name, uh, by a gentleman named Peter Kelder. Uh, when you first read the book, you might say, ah, it's nonsense. What I'd like you to do is let it absorb in. Read the book. Don't worry about practicing the exercises yet. Read the book. Think about what he's saying. Start following some of the rules at the end of the book. That he's talking about with uh, diet and mentality and things of that nature. Uh, I'd like you to keep working on the moving Qi Kung exercises from the previous um, belt ranks. But The Fountain of Youth has things, um, it's a very interesting book, I don't want to get into too much, but it has things about spinning, it has things to do with your energy chakras, um, certain kind of yoga type positions, I don't want to say exactly, but yoga type positions, and you'll find it very interesting. If you start practicing them, read the book first, let it sink in, and then a period of time later. I don't want to get into the exercises right now, because if you see them, you might say, ah, I kind of do things like that already. I'd like you to read the book and get it in the whole light that uh, the author put out. You'll see me many times referring to outside sources. It doesn't matter where you get your information from, it matters that you get it and you have the experience, the opportunity to experience it. Also, I like to think about this belt rank is start thinking about it. It could be when you're driving, it could be when you're walking to school, when you're doing house cleaning chores, whatever it is. Start thinking about self defense situations. What would I do if I was standing on ice on this lake behind us and somebody came and attacked me? What would I do if I was with my child? That uh, video I talked about before, Strong Against Crime, see if you can get a hold of it. That'll really help you a lot with your role playing. I strongly recommend it, especially by this rank, that you get a hold of that. If for some reason you can't, then speak to your instructor about, you know, what's my best thing to do? Because the questions on your written test will be, when being attacked, 
with a club, what's the most important thing going through your mind? Not your instructor's mind, your mind. What's the most important thing going through your mind when fighting two people? Maybe it's keeping them in line. Different things of that nature. Start thinking about that because this test really isn't hard, the written test coming up, but it is designed to get you to think. And your answers on one part of the test have to tie in with your answers on other parts of your exam. That's the key. By the end, we want you to be knowledgeable. On this video, we did the basic techniques at first. Remember the upholding block, the snake, the Buddha, the darting out kicks this way, the sweeping leg motions. Then we did techniques of the three snake tempos, and then the three combinations, 13, 25, and 28, and four kata, and then a staff form. That was the new material. Practice it, get it, but the real key is what it's going to teach you. So it now starts to filter through all your old material. And before you know it, it becomes a cohesive glue that everything comes together. This video is not designed to teach you every intricacy of every movement. Because I can actually talk for about an hour on every movement. It's designed to give you the general format, get exposed to you. So when your teacher teaches it to you, you're kind of ready for it. Or if your teacher taught it to you and you kind of forgot it. That way you're getting prepped for a test tournament or demonstration. Or anytime you just think one and want to kind of do it. When I'm doing the forms, put on slow frame advance. See what I'm doing. See what happens when I slipped on the grass a little bit extra, maybe. That probably happened today, I don't remember. Or I moved this way and my foot got caught somewhere. See what happens what went wrong. And practice that way. Brown belt, second degree, is a very big rank. It's a countdown to black belt. The idea now is practice that octagon drill to get all those little bugs out of your system, maybe you're not moving a certain way. If once you achieve black belt, most people when they get black belt, they're set in their ways and they won't really change that much. So make sure that that doesn't happen to you. And the way to make sure it doesn't happen is practice that octagon drill. Every once in a while, make sure. If you find yourself never going this way and always going that way, practice with a wall right here. You can't go that way. When another guy attacks, you have to go that way. Force yourself to have a wide range of motion. Whether it's the octagon with the eight points or use the Kempo clock with the 12 all the way around to 12. I enjoy presenting this material to you. Hope to see you in the future. Keep up the good work. Practice consistently. Practice safely, practice with an open mind.